Running a household while also caring for other people's children is a ton of work. I personally serve breakfast, lunch, snack for my daycare, as well as supper for my family. So I know all about the stress and overwhelm that can come along with daycare with meals on top of it. So I want to share with you the best tips and tricks for meal planning and meal prepping to save you time, money, and sanity. Now, if you guys know anything about me, you know I love a good routine. I really just live by routines. They help me because they take no mind work. They just, you just go through your steps of your day and once it's a routine, you don't have to think about it. And as a busy mom, that is key. So you really need to work it into your routine every month, every week, however often you wanna do it to a meal plan. This will save you so much time and money and sanity along the way. I personally plan meals monthly. I hate meal planning, so this is great because I just do it once a month, 12 times a year, and then it's done. I plan my lunches and my suppers and any other special meals for holidays and things like that, and then it is done for the whole month and I don't have to do it. Sometimes I even do it for two months if I'm really feeling ambitious. And then if you need to, once you're getting into this routine, make a checklist that you can check off every time to really make it a habit of what you need to do, what websites you need to go to, what programs to use, what tools you wanna use, and just check it off as you go so you don't forget anything, and then you're creating that habit. I always start with a new list every time I start a new routine because you wanna make sure you're making a habit of the things you actually wanna make a habit and you don't forget any steps. Once you have a good routine in place, make sure you have a system that you love. A planner, a notebook, a binder, or I have a really awesome solution for you, this amazing printable daycare meal planner. Now you don't have to use this, but it's something I created that I'm launching in this video for you guys. If you are a childcare provider or if you have a big family, it may also work for you. It doesn't have to work just for daycare providers, but I made it specifically with daycare providers in mind. I personally never found a meal planner as a daycare provider that I like, so I would just find something affordable and kind of tweak it to work for me, but I really wanted something that would work, that has everything I need in one spot that looks beautiful hanging on my fridge, and I thought, why not offer it to you guys as well? So there are two different styles depending on your aesthetic. There is my favorite, which is the multicolored watercolor. It has different colors for each month, so it's color-coded, so the weeks match the months, and all the extra pages are just a nice light gray, so you can easily ruffle through and find what you're looking for based on the color. But there's also a really nice sleek chalkboard version as well if you want more of a school theme. It's just black and white, easy on your printer if you don't wanna use your color. There are places to keep track of your favorite meals, meals you want to try. You can log what things you want to try with different kids, what restrictions they have, any allergies. There's a place on the weekly and monthly layout to keep track of how many children were in attendance for the food program and tax purposes. There's tons of room to plan your meals on a weekly and monthly basis, and I included the weekends. So whatever days you're off, you still have room to plan for your family on those days as well. And there's so much more that I haven't even talked about, but if you want more information, look in the description for the full shop page with more information and so you can see more pictures as well. But I created this for you guys and I'm really excited. If you like it, let people know. But if you don't want that, that's totally fine. Just make sure you find a system that really works for you and stick with it. Once you have a good system and a good routine, you want to make sure it's in sight because out of sight is out of mind. I have our meal planner right on the side of our fridge, but you might have it like in your pantry cupboard or in a cabinet somewhere, in your planner, in a binder that you keep in the kitchen, wherever it is, just make sure it's accessible because if you don't have it accessible, you're not going to use it. And then I also use page protectors on mine so that I can easily bring it to the countertop and cook and it's not getting all nasty. When I was creating this, I wanted to find something that would really work well on magnetic surfaces because we have the side of our fridge we put this on. And I found basically the most genius product. It's just a binder clasp, but it's magnetic. And I will link to these below. I bought two of them. It's exactly what I had in mind. I didn't know they actually created them. So I can just page protect the pages, stick it on the fridge, and then it's all right there, handy dandy easily get to what I want, add new pages very easily, and it's very, very strong magnets. So hopefully this will help some of you if you want a planner like this and you have a spot on your fridge or you know a magnet board of some sort, this is an amazing product and it's very affordable as well. Okay, now when it comes to actually prepping and cooking, 
make sure you batch cook. So if you're cooking hamburger, make sure you make a few extra pounds and just throw it in the freezer. This is gonna save you so much time. And then if you get to a day where you just stress and you're tired and you had this like really elaborate meal plan, you can just pull out your hamburger, a jar of pasta sauce, microwave the hamburger a little bit, mix them together, make some pasta and you're good. There's so many uses for pre-cooked ground beef, shredded chicken, shredded pork, and so on and so forth. So try to batch cook whenever possible. We also batch cook in that we prep our meals on the weekends. So we love the service five dinners, one hour. I have an affiliate link, but we also pay for our own with our own money. I love it. I've been using it for about a year now. They have tons of recipes on there. I even make it keto friendly for myself and we just prep a few meals on Sunday and then they're ready to go for the week. So on weeknights, it saves us so much time, especially when we're running to activities. And then I also sometimes will repurpose those for daycare, which brings me to my next point, repurpose your suppers. A lot of people do this and if you aren't, you definitely should start. So if you make a big batch of something for supper at night for your family, either serve it to daycare the next day or repurpose it in some way. I do this all the time and this really helps with the food waste. So if you made beef for supper, you can repurpose it in some way. Maybe you made tacos. You could turn that into sloppy joes. You could have like a taco pasta. You could just serve tacos again. You could have enchiladas. There's so many different things you can do just to repurpose a meal you made for supper. That way, if your own kids are at daycare, they're not eating the same exact thing, but some of them don't really care. So. Do what you gotta do, moms. And then what I really like to do is to not be spending tons of money on meat. So I only try to use one or two more expensive types of meats throughout the week for daycare, and then the rest I serve up eggs, or have a meatless day, or I do tuna, or I try to get our protein from other sources. Like I'll do our dip lunch, which is one of our favorite things, which just has like a bunch of different dips and things you can dip into it. So you might have apples and peanut butter and pretzels, some yogurt, some carrots and ranch and hummus, and just a bunch of things, but you're getting the protein from other sources without actually serving meat. So I might do like tacos one day and then serve that beef another day, but then in between I'll do like breakfast for lunch, dip lunch, and then I'll do a pizza where I just throw some pepperoni on there or just a cheese pizza. So that way I'm not spending a ton of money on the meat, but they're still getting you know, good sources of protein and variety throughout the week. One of my favorite tips for you guys is that easy is the most fun. I have found over the years working with kids, doing daycare, being a mom, that usually the easiest lunches are the ones they're actually gonna eat. So like I said, those dip lunches, homemade Lunchables I make, which is crackers, cheese, and lunch meat, the kids actually eat it all. So you can serve really fancy gourmet meals, but it doesn't mean they're actually gonna eat it, so you're just wasting money some of the time. And that's not to say not to offer new things, but you know your group, you know your children, and sometimes just throw in those easy meals because they're actually gonna eat them. <laughs> roll-ups are great. I do all kinds of roll-ups, either with tortillas or crescent rolls, so you just throw some stuff in it and you roll it up and it's way more fun. So turkey and cheese, I do pizza roll-ups. You could do peanut butter with banana or chocolate chips or honey or apple, whatever you want. And then with the crescent rolls, you can put lunch meat in there. You can put chicken with cheese. You can do like a chicken marinara kind. There are so many ways, but easy is the most fun and the most likely they're actually going to eat it. Now, some people love to do recurring menus for lunch, for supper, for everything, and I think that's great. I personally don't because I like to switch things up, and especially for this channel, I like to try new things. We like to create our own recipes, but I do have recurring menus for two different things, for breakfast and for snack. I like to spend a lot of time figuring out lunches and suppers. And so I, you know, work harder on those. I prep those. I really get them streamlined and delicious. And that's where we really try the new foods. But for breakfast and snack, that's usually we have crunch time. For breakfast, often there's a bus coming and children coming and going, kids getting dropped off and it's kind of crazy. So I have just staples that I do. I do the same menu every single week. Once in a while, I'll switch it up, but pretty much every week it's the same. And then for snack as well, I do a two week rotating menu. Once in a while, I'll switch it up, but for the most part, I just keep it the same. And this really helps keep costs down as well because so often I would go to the store and say, oh, that would be so fun for snack. And then I would forget. And then it would, you know, I just did a pantry clean out and I had to throw a bunch away for this very reason. So if you can, 
make something recurring in your meal plan just to save your time, sanity, and thought power. Save the thought power for dealing with the children, not on the meals. I really recommend having a list somewhere. So sit down and actually think about what are some meals that you can make in a pinch. I actually have a little page you can print out in the daycare meal planner as well for this. So it's basically meals that you can cook when poop hits the fan, if you know what I mean. If you deal with little children, you know sometimes poop actually does hit the fan. I mean, anything can happen with little kids, but you all know the days where everything's gone wrong. You've got spit up all over. There's been blowout after blowout. You've called parents to pick up their kids. There's been vomit. Kids are fighting. There's a broken wall. Like who knows? Maybe the toilet broke. Maybe the electricity's out. There are so many things that can go wrong. You want to have a list that you can go to when poop hits the fan that you can easily make that takes little thought power and requires only stuff you usually have on hand. So for me, this is all, a lot of the things I've already mentioned. The dip lunch is easy, homemade Lunchables, a quick PB&J, buttered noodles with cottage cheese, waffle sandwiches. I mean, just think of some things that you normally have on hand and how could you make those into a really easy lunch, especially if you're on the food program and you all know the day that they drop by happens to be the day that you don't want them dropping by the most. So just have a list handy somewhere so when you're completely discombobulated, you can go to it and know exactly what you can make that follows the guidelines you need it to follow that's healthy enough for the kids and can get lunch on the table quickly so you can have some sanity. And lastly, we all get it drilled into us at trainings, on Instagram, on Facebook, all over the place that kids need variety, that you should be offering all these different types of foods and all these different types of ways and you feel really guilty if you aren't. I have found and I have read through people who specialize in children's eating that variety can come in so many different ways. And I'm just here to encourage you guys. Adding variety and offering new foods doesn't mean you need to offer salmon and filet mignon and like these more out there foods all the time. It can be as simple as just changing up a very simple recipe and just slightly altering it in a few ways. I follow a really amazing Instagram called Feeding Littles that I'd highly encourage you guys to follow. And I love the posts they do every now and again of how you can alter something simple in many different ways. So for example, peanut butter and jelly. We think of that as, you know, it's not the healthiest, but kids usually like it and will eat it. Well, how could you adapt that and switch it up and add variety with that? You could cut it up in different ways. You could have it open face. You could have chocolate chips sprinkled on it. You could toast the bread. You could not toast the bread. You could cut it into a different shape. You could have it with crust, without crust, change the bread, change the type of butter, maybe make peanut butter into almond butter, maybe add chia seeds, change the jelly. There are so many different things you can do to add variety with that one dish. So think of how you could change other dishes and add variety so you don't feel like you're just doing the same old, same old. You actually are adding variety and give yourself some credit because we have a very hard job and it's not just on us to add variety. Parents need to as well. So just feel good that you are adding variety and just see how you can easily switch it up without spending tons of money or serving food that the kids are never going to eat. I really hope this video helped you guys. And if you stay to the end, I have a special deal for you for my diehard glue sticks who I absolutely love, who support our channel and love everything that we stand for. We love you guys. And so we wanted to offer to our glue stick community a discount for those who want this daycare meal planner. If you purchase within the first 48 hours, you can use a coupon code for 20% off using the code GLUE20. So make sure you spell it right and everything. I'll have it right here on the video so you know you can spell it right. But GLUE20 will get you 20% off on either the chalkboard or the watercolor version. And if you want both, so you can switch it up because these are undated, they will last you forever. So if you want both, just to switch it up, you can purchase both for $20 using the code BUNDLE20 on the bundle link. And I will have that link below as well. So BUNDLE20 for both or GLUE20 for either one to get 20% off or both for $20. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave your tips either, either in the comments if YouTube hasn't disabled them or on our community tab where there'll be a corresponding post to go along with this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you. Bye guys.